What do you do with non-recyclable rubbish? Easy, just bin it. But how is this going to be handled? In Singapore, this solid waste will be turned into ash in one of our four incineration plants. The ash, together with the non-incinerable waste, will then be shipped from the Tuas Marine Transfer Station to Sumaka Landfill twice a day. Hi, Mr. Lu. Hi, nice hi. to meet you. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. So you are going to bring us to a place where the rubbish from the mainland is shipped to Sumaka Island, yeah. right? Okay. okay so, uh, do you need a mask? It's going uh, to be smelly, right? I, I, think I bought some. It's okay. The, it's okay. I think the smell is quite acceptable. Uh, acceptable. Now we are going to this place called we call the transfer building. Uh -huh. This is where the waste removal operation will take place. Oh, Let's okay. go inside there. Okay, so we don't need the yeah, secret weapon. Okay, okay. Generally, the, mask, the smell is acceptable. Acceptable. It's quite unusual because you know when we leave perishable food at home overnight, the order is actually quite unbearable. But over here, even though it's a place where all the rubbish is shipped from the mainland, uh, the smell is acceptable. So why you is that the case? Sumaka landfill is unlike conventional dam uh, dumping ground. It is a landfill for only for the ash from incineration plant as well as the non incinerable waste. And this material basically are inert and inorganic. As a result, that's why you can see here, smell generally is quite okay yeah. and you don't see many flies here. Oh yeah, that's right. No yeah, flies. Because because the waste material here, there's no food source inside the waste material. Uh -huh. Without the food, this how the fly will not survive. Oh, All other okay. factors, for example, like uh, cockroaches, ants, and rats, you don't see any of this here, correct? Right? Oh, so this dumping ground is actually very sanitized. Uh. Yes. The waste here will make its final journey to the tipping site for disposal, and these cells are their final resting place. But don't worry about whether the waste will go into the open sea. These enclosed cells were made by reclaiming the seabed around Pulau Saking. They are lined with layers of sand, clay and an impermeable geomembrane and this will prevent the waste from seeping into the sea. Now you may ask, how can we tell if there's a leakage from the cells? Well, these mangrove trees and their dependents will serve as a good indicator as they won't do well in a polluted environment. But why do we opt for incineration as our waste disposal method? We are very short on that. So why we burn the refuse? Partly because uh, by burning the refuse, we can achieve a very huge volume reduction. We can reduce the volume by 90%. Okay. Because of this advantage, that's why we want to burn as much waste as possible. Mm -hmm. So after the burning, then the ash will then come here and then be done. Okay. As a result, this way we don't need a lot of land to dump our ash. Okay, yeah, and the landfill capacity can be prolonged. Uh, yeah. Finding or building a landfill is extremely costly. So do your part to prolong the lifespan of Sumaka landfill. I've been reusing my bag for 7 years. What about you?